Ladies and gentlemen, snippets of code for AMD's FSR3 have appeared online. Tantalizingly, it seems this technology can generate multiple interpolated frames, and we also now have a better understanding of how this could work under the hood. But before we get into the actual code itself, I want to give you guys a quick update to the history so far on FSR3. So it was initially announced back in November um, of 2022. And since then, of course, we actually had an update of sorts in March. Now, this was during the GDC conference, and they provided a couple of interesting slides. So the first slide would be native rendering to FSR3. They basically show the pipeline of native rendering, FSR2 using a two times upscaling, and then FSR3 using a two times upscaling and also frame interpolation. In the second slide here, we can see FSR3 benefits from synergies between upscaling, which of course basically means your uh, basic generating pixels so in this case let's say 1440p to 4k and then interpolation which is basically the act of generating a new frame itself on the gpu nvidia have already done this with dlss3 so if you want to know more about this i suggest you look at their own official documents for, uh, for dlss3 as it'll get you up to snuff but basically speaking in this case um, AMD are leveraging both motion vectors and fluid motion. So motion vectors are important because basically you need to, if you want to generate a new frame of animation, you need to know what the trajectories are of all the various objects and bits and bobs on the, in the scene. Because obviously if you have something which is suddenly going a completely wrong direction, even if it's only for a single frame, it's going to look really screwy. Introducing FSR3, AMD states that uh, they could achieve even more with interpolated frames and they can offer a two times boost versus FSR2. And accordingly, this will actually be able to integrate fairly easily into FSR2. So if you've already got FSR2 in your game engine, let's say with UE4 games or what have you, theoretically, you should be able to update to FSR3 relatively simply. So that gives us a kind of an overview of what happened in the past, but Kepler L2 on Twitter has discovered a very interesting entry on GitHub. This is for AMD's GPU open drivers. Now, this does get into a little bit of C++ code that I'm going to go into, and then we're going to go into some of the bigger questions for this in a moment. But first of all, let's go to the on-screen screenshot, uh, because this itself has caused a lot of confusion, I think, online. So uint32 is basically an unsigned integer, which is basically a type of variable in uh, C++. And then you can see uint32 frame generation ratio, which of course is listed as four. The To the right, by the way, the stuff in gray, that is a comment. That could literally be anything. You could say that cookies are tasty, cats are cute, or whatever. It really is irrelevant. And then underneath that is uint32 pace generated frame. Now, what's really important here is four is not the number of frames which are being generated. This has caused a lot of confusion online. Now, I want to stress, I am not a C++ master, and that is putting it mildly. However, to my understanding, what you're actually doing is assigning a bit to this. You are not actually providing the number of frames. So, again, this number is not to say that you cannot have four generated frames, but it's to say that it doesn't necessarily equate to four generated frames. It could be one additional frame, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four, it could be seven. We honestly do not know based upon this code. Kepler also adds that there's some, quote, interesting implications. FSR3 seems to be driver side, which means it wouldn't work on NVIDIA GPUs, and frame gen ratio implies that it can create more than one interpolated frame. But again, this is not necessarily equating four that is just the bit that is being assigned to it so if we actually look at the code itself this is where things get a little more complicated i'll leave a link to this in the video description but um you can see on screen a pretty nice overview actually of what's going on here so um, again, I won't read out what we've just gone through because, well, it's pointless, but if you look just a little bit above that, specifies the display output post-processing desktop texture information that provides OpenGL versus Interlop, and then below that specifies direct capture resource information. Again, these are comments. Direct capture is an extension that allows full screen access primary display. It's only supported by Windows. 
And then you can basically see that uh, this is basically part of that whole bit of that whole block of code. Um, and then vidpn source ID of the primary screen, on screen primary. Now, again, this could be therefore a reference to something to do with on screen capture. Um, or it could be FSR free and, you know, more about that. Kepler seems pretty confident that it is actually FSR free based, but I'm just letting you guys know because again, there has been a little bit of confusion about this. And of course the problem is we are A, dealing with a product which is not actually launched yet, and B, we are looking at snippets of code. So without the full thing and full context, it's very difficult to know exactly what's going on as AMD themselves could just be deliberately putting out misinformation, to be honest with you. What I will say is that I've heard FSR 3 is coming on relatively well, um, and that the date for it is probably going to be somewhere in August. However, obviously setbacks can happen, and officially they haven't given us a date, so I would not take August with any level of confidence. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see actually what they are capable of with F FSR 3. Uh, one source has actually told me that will even work on RDNA 1, which would be very intriguing indeed. I would be very happy if it worked on RDNA 1. Obviously, AMD, I think, um, I think they've officially said that they would like it to work on, F on RDNA 2, which would be absolutely amazing. Um, it's going to be very interesting, though, to see what the quality of this is actually like. I am very curious... But the main one is what type of latency are we going to be dealing with? What's going to be the quality of these frames? What NVIDIA did, of course, with RTX 40 Lovelace is they basically overhauled the tensor cores and they can deal with some of the uh, motion uh, information that previously can, you know, RTX 30 couldn't. So it's going to be very curious to see what AMD are able to do with FSR 3 because obviously if it's relatively similar in terms of quality, it would be definitely a bit of a slap in the face to NVIDIA, as particularly if it would also work on older GPUs. I would be very happy, obviously, if it worked on, let's say, a 6800 XT or whatever. So it's going to be very interesting, honestly, to see what, in what AMD actually do here. But anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and all of that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.